Welcome back! We have successfully challenged death and returned with the spirits of King Caliphim and Queen Alaria, who have now left to gather their supporters. Which is a bit unfortunate for us because it would have been much easier if we could just walk up to the castle with them and get in that way. No, instead we have to find another way in. And unfortunately, we cannot use Beauty's clothes for that because we don't have them anymore. Nor do we have the Mirror of Truth anymore, so... The place where we previously used that also will need a different solution. So how can we get into the castle without Beauty's clothes? Well, remember that we have one spell left, the Magic Paint spell. For which we, of course, need a paintbrush from the pawn shop. Good day, Prince Alexander. Hi uh, there, merchant. We just brought your king and queen back from the dead. What do you think about that? So let's trade in the tinderbox. Would you mind if I traded this in? Of course, Prince Alex. Please, choose something in exchange for the items on the counter. Alexander looks closely at the items on the counter to make his selection. Alright, the paintbrush then. I think I'd like the painter's brush. Very good, Prince Alex. The painter's brush it is. May your painting go well. Feel free to bring back the brush at any time. Thank you. Also, remember the last conversation we had with Jolo before we um, came to the split in the path. He suggested that he might be able to get the lamp of Shamir. Old lamps for new! Old lamps! For new! Yes, I was just getting to that. He suggested he might be able to get the Lamp of Shamir if we could find an exact replica. And since we are now done with um, this lamp, let's see if the um, Lamp Peddler perchance has an exact replica of the Lamp of the uh, Genie. There's no reason to use that. Excuse me, Peddler, but I have an old lamp that might interest you. Ah, an old lamp. And what a nice traditional design, too. Take your pick of my new lamps. How lucky! He has an exact replica of the lamp we saw in the cutscene. Of course, technically Alexander can't know what it looks like, but fortunately, we do! Ah, a fine choice, my son. Here is your new lamp. Good day, and I thank you, sir. Good day. Another dud. Yeah, really, what did you expect? That we would really give away a magic lamp? All right. Let's see if we can't get into the uh, castle. It's going to be a bit difficult here, of course, with the guards standing by. But here we have a nice quiet corner, and we know that behind this wall are some corridors inside the castle. But you know what this wall is missing? 
a door. So let's finish the magic paint spell and draw us a door. The instructions said to put the uh, swamp ooze and river sticks water into the cup, which we've done, and then steer it with the black horse feather. Alexander dips the large black feather into the teacup and stirs the contents gently. To his amazement, the jet black color of the feather slowly drains from end to tip into the teacup. The teacup mixture blackens and thickens to a paint-like consistency. Alexander carefully puts it away, discarding the drained feather. And now, let us paint. Feeling artistically inspired, Alexander decides to make use of the large blank castle wall. That's vandalism, Alexander. Ah, a doorway. Just what Alexander was thinking this wall needed. Alexander has obviously never seen Beetlejuice. Otherwise he'd know that you need to draw a doorknob. Now let's cast that magic paint spell to make the uh, painting real. With trepidation, Alexander gathers his strength for the enchantment of the painted door. Magic paint, black as ink, bring to life what I think. Make it real what I draw, according... The spell worked. The door has magically solidified. I don't know why it is the uh, narrator who speaks this spell, even though Alexander himself speaks the other two spells. But we made a door. A very real-looking door now exists in the castle wall. Eager to be inside the castle at last, Alexander opens the enchanted door and steps inside. The magic paint door fades back into the wall. So much for an easy exit. Now what I don't get is where this door leads. Logically it should lead back outside, considering it's on the outside wall. Unless this wall is very thick and we just crossed through it without noticing it. And we have found ourselves in the hallways that we saw using the hole in the wall earlier, rather than in the uh, much nicer hallways upstairs. So hopefully we can still um, reach Kasima and stop the wedding in time, like we did last time. We're going to have to go about it in a slightly different way, however. The castle basement is cool after the heat of the day. The arched domed ceilings add to the sense of spaciousness in the wide corridors. On the east wall are three dungeon doors. This is the west basement hallway. It's actually not uh, that bad looking for a castle basement. There's a strange door on the west wall. There doesn't appear to be any handle or keyhole on the door. That's inconvenient. How can we open it then? Alexander doesn't see any way of opening that door manually. Hmm. Well, I guess we're going to have to figure something out later, since I have no idea how to approach that at this point. Let's take a look at these other doors. Three dungeon doors line the east wall of the hallway. Alexander hears a door off the north hall open. Then, the sound of guard dog footsteps. The footsteps are headed this way. Uh-oh. Guards are coming. Let's head into the door. Alexander opens the dungeon door and slips inside. Alexander hears the guard dog leave the basement. It seems he's safe enough for the moment. Mother? Mother, where are you? 
Good thing the guard dog didn't hear us slamming the door. Hey, spider. A brown spider peers down at the man in the cell with little interest. There's no one here to talk to, except the ghost. I wanted to try to talk to the spider. Not sure if you can. Probably not. There is a ghost here. A spirit weeps inconsolably on the cot. The spirit appears to be the ghost of a little boy. Hmm, that seems awfully familiar. The spider is not interested in hearing about Alexander's problems. I guess it has its own problems. Let's talk to the ghost of the little boy. What's the matter, little boy? I'm lost. I can't find my mother. I don't know why she would just leave me here. I've been alone ever so long. Hmm. Mother? Mother, where are you? That sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? it sounds like the story of the um, ghost we met in the realm of the dead. Could this be Ali? Her son? Wait, wasn't the bookshop owner also called Vali? Must be a common name. Let's see um, if he recognizes this handkerchief. You must be the son of the spirit I met in the realm of the dead. She gave me this handkerchief and asked me to tell you that she's waiting for you there. It's Mama's! It even smells like her. I can feel her now. I know where to go. Wait. Before you go, is there anything you can tell me about the castle? I like to play in secret places. In the basement behind the Man of Steel is a door. Nobody except me knows it's there anymore. Well, that could be useful information. I do have to wonder, though. What is he doing here? Does he just like hanging around here, or did he die here? As if he and his mother died in the dungeons, that sort of implies that the previous king and queen threw them in here. Which would really not cast them in such a favorable light. Although maybe it was the vizier, and maybe they just uh, lived in the castle, maybe there are servants here or something, and the boy just likes hanging around in the dungeon now that he's dead. Personally, my theory is that they died in an accident involving Jolo trying to juggle some knives. Well, we'll see if we can't put the uh, ghost boy's information to some use in the next video.